I started to create historical characters in my teens, many years before creating characters and castle carriages inspired by fairy tales. And it's only very recently, a couple of years ago, that I came back creating them for my historical video series. It was first as an exercise and a recreation, as a fun artistic personal change and challenge. Because I don't do first a lot of human and even less historical characters in my work. It's the opposite of my normal creations. I don't create and invent a face or an outfit. I try to interpret with my paper techniques I developed throughout the years what I see and capture the features and the expression of each character to the best of my abilities. Though I'm by no means a portraitist or a specialist of portrait, I love this exercise. Because doing a portrait requires a lot of focus and concentration. And it's just a fun artistic challenge, it's like a workout for the eyes. For each character I've created so far, I try to gather first as many paintings, engravings of their faces and profile. For Marie Antoinette, for example, it was very, very easy because there is a lot of paintings, sculptures, drawings available of her at every age. And I created her twice as a draft version for my first historical series with Alexandre T. And the second one belongs to my new Marie Antoinette workshop. And for this one, I try to take a bit more time and to really try to gather and capture her face a little better than I did the first time. Doing historical portraits, historical characters and sculpting their features and their face put me back into the tracks of my favorite artists of past centuries. Though mine are made in paper and help me tell a story, but the business of portraits, old painting, pastel, cameos, was huge for several centuries actually. And for most artists, it was a sure way to make some money and to make a decent living and to have commissions. And I cannot resist to share the portrait lesson given by the portraitist Elisabeth Vigée-Lebrun, the portraitist of Marie Antoinette. And it's a lesson she's given to her niece and it appears at the very end of her memoirs. She says that before receiving your model, the painter has to be ready 30 minutes before the person comes to be portrayed. That the colors, the palette, the canvas, everything has to be prepared and ready in advance. So that the painter isn't stopped by any logistical reason as he's doing his work. She adds a lot of advices, including paying compliments to women. It's always a good idea to have them relaxed and in a good mood to do the portrait so that they are more patient. She also said that sessions to do a portrait cannot be longer than one hour and 30 minutes. And she also mentions to the painters and amateurs who are not very happy with what people say about their portraits, she says, don't be mad if some people don't see any resemblance and similarity with your portraits. Some people don't know how to look. And among other historical characters I made, I created Le Maréchal Bessière for one of my other historical series. This one was also very easy to do because he appears in a lot of Napoleonic battles painting and it was not very hard to gather profile and angles of his face. For Chauderlot de Laclos, on the contrary, Chauderlot de Laclos is the author of Les Liaisons Dangereuses and he appears in several of my videos and you are going to see him in the next ones. And for him it was a little different. We have only two portraits in pastel made of him in his mid-40s and in his 50s. But what was really fun is I eventually found, after quite nice research, a book on eBay about his correspondence. And it is the only book which features his profile in a cameo, as he is in his early 60s. And this profile, this little portrait, was impossible to find online or anywhere. I had to find this book to eventually find it. And to do a portrait, a profile is really necessary, so I really needed to find it. And in the character I made, I was inspired mainly by his second portrait where I try to capture a bit his worried expression as this one was made just after the revolution and in a moment of his life which was quite stressful and troubled and it appears a little in this portrait. And you will see him appearing in the new episode of Le Comte Alexandre T, which is coming soon.
And for him this time, I'm also making some removable clothes and jackets because he has to appear with different outfits in the video. So Dalot Laclos talks about the way he had made this cameo at the time. Cameo was a very easy and cheap way to have your portrait done uh, in wood or in any other precious materials. And it could be put in a ring and he offered this one to his wife. And he talks in a letter to his wife after she received the cameo and she was over the moon when she received it. And she thought that the resemblance was just amazing. October 28, 1800, Milano. I reread your letter as often as I read the very first one you sent to me. I love everything about it. And how you exaggerate describing me so handsome. I congratulate myself to have had the idea of this little antique cameo. I think if the artist was here, I would kiss him. The cameo is made in wood, but made like any other cameo, whether in ivory, precious stone, I could have chosen ivory, but ivory turns yellow and not evenly, so that you have a yellow stain on your eye or on the tip of your nose, which alters a bit the portrait. But wood cameo, I think, will become very trendy. I have to tell you that the artist did a first session of about 13 minutes to draw me with a pencil to have the contour. Then I didn't see him for two days. And on the third one, he came back to do some finishes. And the cameo was already all completed. So in total it took 1 hour and 30 minutes and 36 livres. But I hope this artist will be more expensive in Paris, except for me. By the way, I invite you to say that you ignore the price of my cameo and to say that you ignore the name of the artist. You know, people always judge things on names. For Alexandre it was very different because we only have one engraving, so for him I mainly created and invented his face, but I tried to follow the description we have in his passport. I just tried to imitate what I read here and there. Most of the historical characters I create for my videos have the same scale because they can appear in a video or another. The only one which is a little bigger is my second Marie Antoinette because I created her for the workshop my Marie Antoinette workshop, and when I create and film at the same time, I always have a tendency to make things bigger and they become bigger, bigger as the workshop goes. like to try also to create your own Marie Antoinette like this one specifically you can join my Marie Antoinette workshop which is still open I didn't have a chance to do videos on YouTube during the launching offer which closed on, Ju on June 30th so it is closed now but the workshop is still open so if you are interested in sculpting faces doing dresses outfits corsets accessories removable clothes because we can remove her dress she has a corset which we can remove if we want to. Uh, you, you still have the possibility to join till July 20. You can visit my workshops website, learnthemagicofpaper.com and you can click on the link under this video if you want to have more information and uh, want to see if it's something you would like to do. Uh, it's really a fun workshop. Now it's not easy, I would say. The hell is going to be a challenge because sculpting faces human is hard. I, I've done, uh, before doing my online workshops, I did a lot of in-person workshops with ladies of all um, all skill really and all level of sculpting and creating and all that for most of them it was really hard to do now as we are working from home you have all the time you need to watch the videos properly work at your own pace do mistakes start again the way of working is completely different of course so you can totally have mistakes start again and the, the head is removable completely removable so you can make progress on your on your body your outfits your clothes 
and uh, then come back to the head and I wanted to thank all the ladies who already joined the workshop and a few gentlemen too and those who joined our live calls we have started the live calls and there are many more coming so if you are tempted to join just know that we still have some calls in July which is a great way to interact to meet I have a chance to meet you which is one of my real pleasure of doing the workshops is to see new faces and new people from around the globe who have who are also interested in the same thing than me so I'm really uh, I really look forward to meet you if you're interested in this aspect of the workshop too and also to see what others are, are doing and their progress see the difficulties they have and all that so you will find all the informations under this video and feel free to ask me questions if you have some questions now the workshop is going to close on July 20 till next summer, next summer 2024. But once and all, you keep access to the content. And you are going to see this Marie Antoinette in my new TE episode. So I had the first episode, I had my first Marie Antoinette, the draft one you have seen, which I did much faster, really for the, for the video actually. It, I didn't know at the time I would do a workshop with that. Uh, so it was made more quickly, I did a more simple dress and all that. Here it's the most sophisticated my internet. So you're going to see how she appears in the, the episode. She's going to have other accessories because we are going to talk about other things you are going to see, um, which are all um, inspired by Le, Ma Le Comte de Tis memoirs. And if you didn't watch the first episode, you can watch it and you can see my first Marie internet and you will see the second one in a few days on my channel and I wanted to apologize because I didn't have a lot of videos in June mainly because I was really focused on the workshop and it's hard when you are already film and edit and do so many videos to have time to do something interesting for YouTube so I didn't have really the chance to do that and I was a bit unwell with the heat and the change of season we have it's not su super warm temperatures really but during the summer season I already have I always have some Tense neck and the tendency to be in a fog. Really, my brain doesn't work really like in, in during the cold month. I'm a real winter person. I like my cold because it's where my brain works. And I feel better now, and I'm going to have a lot of fun things uh, to share on the on the channel in July. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, thank you for your comments, and I hope to see you very soon with really fun videos coming. Thank you, and I will see you soon. <laughs>